In the last video, we saw that 8-1 was a solution to this system of linear equations. And that was because when we plugged in 8-1, 8-1 was a solution to the first equation, and also 8-1 was a solution to the second equation. So 8-1 is a solution to the system because 8-1 is a solution to both equations. However, 2, 7 is not. Now, what we're going to do now is talk about how to find a solution to the system of linear equations. All right. And we're going to first start in what we say is two dimensions. By two dimensions, we just mean we have two variables, x and y. So we saw algebraically that 8, 1 is a solution. But what does that actually mean? Well, it means 8, 1 makes both things true. <clears throat> So how could we find 8, 1 given this set of equations? It turns out that there's quite a few ways to find a solution. We're going to look at three methods. The first is going to be one we're going to only use in two dimensions. So in two dimensions, we can use graphing. Let me just write out graphing. So we could graph these two equations on some graphing paper or with our graphing calculator and find the solution that way. And I'll talk more about what that means in <clears throat> the remainder of this video after I talk about the other two methods. The other two methods that we're going to utilize are called the elimination method, or sometimes people refer to this as the addition method, and then the substitution method. All right. So we can use graphing, we can use the elimination method, or we can use the substitution method. Our book calls the elimination method the elimination method, but some would call it the addition method. So those are the three ways we're going to find solutions. Now, these second two, the elimination and substitution methods, those are both algebraic methods. Graphing is unique, uh, at least for us, in two dimensions. So if you remember, linear equations, if I just have an x and y, so I just have two variables, those are equations that I can graph. So let's say we want to find a solution to this system using graphing. Now, all that means is that we are going to graph this equation and then graph this equation. Now, we can do that a number of different ways. This x plus y equals 9. You could set up a big table and fill in the values. We've done that before. You could make that into slope-intercept form and use the slope and the y-intercept. And then we do the exact same thing for the other. We could fill in values or we could use slope intercept form. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to utilize the computer system. So we're going to take 3x minus 4y equals 20 and x plus y equals 9. 
and plug those in. to a graphing calculator. Now I'm using Desmos, but you could use a TI-84 if you have one. You could also use any other systems. All right. Um, let me put in step one here so that you can see all the numbers. So X plus Y equals nine. That's a linear equation in two variables that produces a line. In fact, the x plus y equals nine is this red line. Three x minus four y equals 20, that produces this blue line. Now remember, each point on this line represents a solution to the system. So for instance, the point four negative two is a solution to the blue line. But obviously, 4, negative 2 is not a point on the red line. In fact, the red line, if we plug in x value of 4, we get a 5. So every point on the line is a solution to that linear equation. So what's it mean to be a solution to the system? It means that the point has to be simultaneously on the red line and on the blue line. And obviously that's where the red and blue line intersect. And we can see that happens right there at the point eight, one. So all we have to do is graph two lines, notice that it's at the x value of eight and the y value of one at where they intersect and say, well, my solution is the point eight, one. So we graph lines where they intersect is a solution to both. And we saw, again, using Desmos, that 8, 1 is the solution, is the point of intersection. Now that's what's gonna happen the vast majority of times. The vast majority of times, we're going to graph the two lines and we're gonna get a unique point as the point of intersection. Let's try another one. Find a solution using graphing. Let's say we have y equals one half x, oops, one half x plus two and y equals negative one x minus four. And let's find a solution by graphing. So we would graph this line. By the way, these are all linear because notice that x is raised to the first power, y is raised to the first power. There's no terms involving an x and a y. Um, and we have an equation. So these are both linear equations, just written in a slightly different way. So let's go ahead, get rid of these lines. y equals 1 half x minus one, y equals negative one, x. Oh, was that minus? Let me uh, review, I forgot what the, the equations were already. Plus two minus four, excuse me. It's two, it's four, all right. So there I've graphed the lines. Now, in this case, since I moved the, the lines all around, 
um, the point of intersection, I kind of have to move over, move my graph over so I can see it. And it looks like negative four zero is the point shared by both of these lines. So it looks like the solution is negative four zero. And again, if I graph this by hand, I would just look and see that that's negative four in the x direction, zero in the y direction. So negative four, zero looks to be the solution. By the way, I said this is the solution. That was on purpose. That's the only point of intersection, okay? If you ever have any doubt, if negative four zero is the right point, you can always plug that into this equation and plug that into this equation and see that you indeed get a solution to both equations. So you can do that on your own if you'd like to check, but Negative four zero is the solution. So like I said, the vast majority of times we get one point of intersection. But there are a couple of unique cases. So most of the point most of the times we get a single point as solution, all right? And that means the lines intersect at a single point. Now I'm saying lines intersect at a single point, that's the two-dimensional version, but there's also a three-dimensional version. It's not lines, but it's planes and I'm not gonna get into it. It's still a single point as a solution. So we either get a single point as a solution, or it turns out that there are a couple of other scenarios. We could get a situation in which we have no solution. Now, what would that look like graphically? Well, if I graphed y equals one half x plus two, and then y equals one half x minus three, what you would see is that these two lines are going in the same direction. And as far as I zoom out, they never cross each other, they never touch. Because they have the exact same slope, they can never touch. And this is the example in two dimensions of where we have parallel lines. So no solution comes from basically parallel lines in two dimensional stuff when we have two equations and two variables. But the other type of solution that we could see is infinite, infinitely many solutions. All right, let's look at what that would mean. Well, it turns out if I just gave you y equals one half x plus two and another copy of the same line, or let's pretend I wrote it as 2x minus 4y equals negative 8. Well, it turns out these are the same two lines. As you toggle back and forth between lines, notice that the lines are right on top of each other. If I highlight one, it blocks the other. So every point on the, this line is also 
a point on this line. Since each line is on top of each other, all of these points are points of intersection. So when we have lines that are exactly the same, we have infinitely many points that work. Now, obviously, when I say infinitely many, I don't mean all. Because if you look at, for instance, the point 5, 0 over here, 5, 0 is not on the line. And neither is 5, 5 or 10, negative 5 but there are infinitely many points on the line. So infinitely many solutions arise from when we have the same lines, okay? Now, like I said, and I've emphasized a couple of times, from graphing in two dimensions, this is how kind of it works. But this was also how it, this is also how it works in three dimensions as well. And when we get into four variables or five variables, again, it's the same thing. We're either going to have a single point as a solution, a single value where each variable is a unique number, or I'm going to have no solutions or I'm gonna have infinitely many solutions. So graphing lets us see that really easy in two dimensions, but it doesn't necessarily um, let us see that in general. Now, I do wanna mention some of the downfall of graphing, all right? some of the problems that we can have with graphing. So one of the things with graphing, like I said, it's hard to graph if we have more than two variables. Then things get a little bit hard to see. We can't draw it by hand. And even on the computer, it's kind of hard to see. So it's hard to graph if you have more than two variables. The other downfall of graphing, sometimes it's hard to see the exact point of intersection. All right? So it's hard to see the point of intersection in some cases. Let me give you an example. What if we have y equals one half x plus two and y equals one third x minus nine, okay? Well, first off, if my grid paper only goes from an x value of negative 15 to an x value of positive 15 or a y value of negative 10 to a y value of positive 10, I don't see the point of intersection because you can guess it's going to happen over here to the left and down. So if my grid paper is limited, then it's hard to see that point of intersection. And even sometimes when we have a point of intersection, this one, it's fairly obvious of where it is, it's at negative 66 comma negative 31. So this one's way off the grid, but at least it's whole numbers. Well, if we're not at whole numbers, then sometimes it's really, really tough to see as well. Let me give you an example of that. Let's take 2x plus 4y equals 5, and then x, oh, I'm sorry, x, x, y, x plus y equals 10, all right? Let's see if we can find where that, those two match up. Notice that the point of intersection is somewhere between 13 and 14 as far as the x value goes. 
and somewhere between negative three and negative four as far as the y value goes. So this point of intersection is really hard to see. It's not exactly, uh, it's not to third, uh, excuse me, it's past 13, but not to 14 yet, an x value. And it's below negative three, but not below negative four in y value. So it's really, really hard to tell what that point happens to be. Now in this one, we could probably figure it out if we had to, right, 0.75s. But you can imagine, once you get into these points that are really, really hard to see, it's very tough to do this by hand. So ugly x values, ugly y values, that makes the point hard to determine. And then also, if my point is way off the grid, it's hard to determine. So again, hard to see if the exact point of intersection. And so that's why we have some algebraic methods as well. Now it is perfectly fine to use graphing, okay? You can use graphing, um, but most of our chapter is gonna be focused on the algebraic methods. And those are the elimination and substitution methods. And we'll look at those in the next videos.